It is Wednesday, November 9th at 6.35 p.m. and I call this Board of Selectmen meeting to order. So for those on hybrid, our television screen is not working so I have you on a laptop so I can't really direct it for you to see everyone but I can turn it during the meeting. First on, or um, second on the agenda is Actually, second on the agenda, I'm going to um, ask for a motion to add two items to the agenda. And one is for 5B, the HVAC committee we talked about last meeting, and also 6E, the capital plan review. So can I have a motion to add those two items? I make a motion to add those two items to the agenda. Second that. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so we've added two items to the agenda. Second is public comment. Nothing now. Third on the agenda is correspondence. We just have one correspondence from Farmington Valley Health Department. And this is for just a reminder of flu clinics. And those are can be scheduled by email, info at fvhd.org or by phone, calling 860-352-2333. Again, it's 860-352-2333. And you can schedule appointments at Farmington Valley Health. And there is, um, they do cover most private insurances or it's $20 cash for a flu virus or for a flu vaccine. And um, these, this is also posted on our website. See. Next are we have the minutes um, to be approved from October 12th, our last meeting. And I think I th it's actually October 26th. Did yeah, I give you the right ones? Yeah, well, it says everything says 26 except for the heading and just didn't change that. I did not notice that. Okay. Okay. So I'll make a motion to approve the previous meeting minutes with the change from the October 12th to the October 26th when the meeting was actually held. Okay, all those in favor? Yes. Say aye. Abstain. Okay. One abstention and two yeses, so that motion carries. Next on the agenda is old business. Next on the agenda is old business. Um, 5A, back office shared services is tabled again for now. The next is the HVA um, grant committee that was, we just added to the agenda. We have a, I, last meeting I appointed members, we appointed members to join the HVAC committee, grant committee, who's working with me and the board of ed on an HVAC grant. And so we appointed members to a committee that. Of, that didn't exist, so now we have to create the actual group. So I need a motion to authorize creation of the HVAC Grant Committee, which already has appointed members. I will make a motion to uh, create the HVAC Grant Committee uh, that we previously appointed members to. Second that. All those in favor of? Aye. The committee? Aye. Okay, that motion carries. So now it is an official committee. Next on the agenda is six, new business. First, we have the tax collector's report, and I'll just go over a highlight. This, at the end of October of this fiscal year, we've collected $13,496,000. It's almost a million dollars more than at this time last year. So that was significant to know. Does anyone have any questions about the tax collector? Yeah, that's really good. Is there yeah. um, any specific <coughs> reason for it other than somebody doing a really good job, or is there something unusual? Or? Um, we did. We do have the collections company, so that contributes a bit to it. Um, we did have. Um, I'm looking at the chart here, and it looks like personal property. Um, we did um, take in more motor vehicle, actually. I think that was a big one. 
what also seemed interesting is the original levy, there was an increase of 732,000. Right. And then the collections actually exceeded the levy with 997,000. So the collections firm seems to also be kicking in quite a bit. And so we've come out. Nice. Yep, it's good to see. Yes. Okay. Next on the agenda are appointments. And first we have John Rusnock for Wetlands, Inland Wetlands Commission. So we can uh, make a motion to appoint him and then I can move on. I'll make a, an appointment to uh, add Mr. Rusnock to the Inland Wetlands Commission. I'll second that. All those in favor? Say aye. 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 Motion carries for Mr. Rustock. Next, for the Park and Rec Commission, we they had two openings, and Morgan Bengal, who is the curator for Newgate Prison, actually um, expressed an interest to join, and she was voted in by the members and Carly McKenney. So, if I can have a motion for those two members to join, I'd like to make a motion to appoint Morgan Bengal and. Carly McKinney. Carly McKinney to the uh, Park and Rec Commission. Second. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Morgan and Carly are now Park and Rec Commission members. Next on the agenda is um, the building department permit fee. So I had a conversation with our building official, Mark O'Dear, and he told me that East Granby is pretty low compared to other towns. And um, so I'll read what he wrote to me. According to the code of the town of East Granby, 196-12 calculation of fees, building permit fees are calculated, calculated by the building official based on the estimated cost of construction determined in a manner established by the Board of Selectmen multiplied by a rate established by the Board of Selectmen. The building department is requesting the permit fee be increased to $17. I know I have 16 on there, but we had another conversation today. Okay. Per thousand for credit card service fees to be collected. Our current fee is at $15 per thousand and does not cover the new system pricing. So we have a new cloud system where people can actually apply for permits online, which is um, very convenient for people and they can pay by credit card. So we're at 15 now and we're, he's requesting we go up to 17 and he did a cost analysis of surrounding towns and we are not the most expensive by any stretch and we're not the least expensive either so many towns around us do charge a, a initial minimum fee of either fifty dollars or sixty dollars um, another town charges thirty six dollars then they start charging per thousand so we're actually in that aspect we're less because we don't have that initial cost um, so that's where we're at. So we'd like to go up to $17. He'd like to go up to $17 per thousand. Okay, so we'll make a motion to uh, increase the building permit fees from $15 to $17 per thousand. I'll second that. I, I just had one question. Sure. The way that it's stated, the permit fee be increased to $17 per thousand for credit card service fees to be collected. So it's actually, my understanding, it's per, it's per the thousand dollars it costs to build. So whether it's credit card or check or whatever? I believe so. Well, it's because it's online. Right. But so if somebody wanted card. to come in. I don't know. Um, the way he has it written is for credit card service fees to be collected because of our new system pricing. So I can double check that with him, but I'm I took I'm understanding it as online. So can can the motion just be seventeen dollars per thousand? And, and if it is just credit sure. card, the only way, or if they can use the check, it'll still be seventeen. Yes. Okay. 
I, I believe the reason he's going up. If you use a credit card, there's obviously a fee associated with it that the town would have to pay. And the, the $2 per thousand would cover the amount of the fee for the credit card service. But it, it you know, it's like, you know, same price cash or credit is what we were, we're talking about. Correct? It's $17 regardless of how you pay. That's that kind of what I was getting at. Yeah, that's my, my understanding is that regardless of how you pay, it's got nothing to do with the credit card service. I understand that the, the credit so card servicing is much easier price. for folks right. where you can go, but across the board, it's going to be $17 per thousand regardless of the method of payment. That's fine. Okay. <clears throat> so all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, motion carries. Okay, so next on the agenda we have um, the purchase and refurbishment of our Coopersburg pumper and the ladder chuck, and we have um, Jeff, and I'm forgetting what your last name is online, and um, so Jeff, our mechanic for our fiber apparatus, did wish to join our meeting to just have a discussion about the new apparatus that we purchased, and Jeff, are you there? I think you're muted. Hello? Wow. Uh, yep, that's good. Okay, there we go. So my, I'm on my laptop. I don't know if you heard that. So I'm going to, um, I don't know what you're looking at right now, to be honest. Okay. Uh, yeah. Joe, sorry, Joe. Okay. So I can just point you to the audience a little bit. Okay. You can um, start talking about your concern. Well, I guess uh, we're talking about the the aerial, is that what you want to talk about, or the pumper? Or well, I know you had mentioned to me about the pumper, about um, just um, the repairs that you had. So what I explained was you had come in my office and just had a concern that you wanted to be clear that you weren't the mechanic who had inspected the pumper originally. Yeah, well, I came into your office because of the, the letter I got about getting paid. Right. That's, that's the reason I came in. and. Uh, yeah, and you should you've been paid since that meeting. Okay. Yeah. If you haven't been okay. yet, you, I saw it on the books. So. Okay. But yeah, but that's the reason I came in was because uh, you know, we we're so far behind on the bills, and I got your letter. So. Okay. Um, but I mean the, the the Coopersburg pumper is a great truck. That's absolutely the way to buy them. It, it's the, the, the best bang for your buck is is that truck. That's awesome. Awesome truck. It needs some repairs, but well, uh, that's a great truck, and we have got the parts to fix it. And we're gonna uh, once we get that once we get this sorted out mechanically, that that truck will serve you great for a lot of years. Okay. Um, but I, you know, as I I didn't look at it, but it's it's a great truck. Okay. And then we're I mean we're talking about the the, the ladder truck. My concerns are that the. the uh, the truck manufacturer is out of business. The manufacturer of the aerial is out of business, so parts is really going to be a concern on that. Okay. Um, that was my big concern when we were talking. Okay, and I knew we talked about the pumper, how it needed like two parts, but those were you've ordered those, you're putting them in, so that yep, was fine. Yep, that's on our. Yep, we're gonna we're gonna schedule that, and I've got a new fuel tank, and then uh, I'm gonna bring it to my shop and do a. A radiator repair, but once we get that sorted out, a little bit that guys that'll serve you guys well for a lot of years. Okay. Um, I like the fire department to have an opportunity to maybe we can have a conversation about. Sure. Okay. Um, does anyone want to talk? I don't know. If you want to talk about the, it's an opportunity. If you want to talk about the, the truck. I. Uh, Jeff hasn't, <clears throat> excuse me, Jeff hasn't seen the ladder truck at all, so I'm not sure how he's able to uh, have any comment on it this time. The I agree with him that the manufacturer of the truck cabin chassis is no longer in business, but all the components, the engine, the drive line, the brakes, um, transmission, all that are components from major manufacturers that are still in business today and and parts are readily available. The ladder was manufactured by Ladder Towers Incorporated on an effort to 
Pennsylvania. Um, Ladder Towers Incorporated has transitioned into a company called Aerial Innovations and is still in business uh, building the same ladders in the same location in Ephrata. Yeah, and like, I, and I agree with you that the, you know, the, the drive line components, those are easy, readily available, no problem with any of that. But it's just a lot of the other stuff would, would concern me. And I honestly, I'd rather see you spend a lot more money up front and get something better to start with. Okay. Where, where, where are you going to get, where, where would you get a windshield? Where would you get a bumper? Where would you get a door? Okay, I'm pretty much done. Yeah. Okay, all right. Thank you, Jeff, I appreciate it. <clears throat> Is there anything else? Are you all set? I mean, like I said, I don't know. I, I, if, if you guys need an aerial, I would rather see you spend a lot more money and buy something good that, that we they can, can, you know, can readily get parts for it. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Appreciate it. Okay. All right. So we'll move on. Hey, just what I just got to you. Pardon my um, not knowing this, but I, I don't know, Jeff. Who? Um, Jeff is our, I thought I said it, and I, I am spacing on your last name, Jeff. I'm sorry. All right. Jeff Bergen. 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 Right. Okay. I knew that. He's our he's our mechanic for our fire apparatus. And is he a town employee? No, he's a contracted. He owns uh, first two fire apparatus out yeah. of uh, Granville, Mass. He's been working on the fire apparatus here probably for 15 years or more, and does a great job. Okay. Yeah, I, I just wasn't familiar. I didn't know if he worked for Public Works. And I'm sorry. Was about helping that. I thought I was over there. Yeah. He um he works with like hundreds of apparatus, pieces of apparatus in the area. In this area, that's yeah. right. Okay. So we hire, we hire him as a contractor or and a vendor. As part of the process, do we have him normally look at apparatus that we were thinking of buying? We or? have, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And yeah. we didn't do that this time? We or? didn't do it with a ladder truck because that ladder truck had been sold and serviced exclusively by Gowans and Knight in Watertown. So they had all the records, all the maintenance records, all the testing records. So we didn't, you know, didn't feel that it was necessary to do that. When we bought the Coopersburg pieces, I believe we did uh, Zoom or FaceTime, correct? Yep. We FaceTimed underneath the yeah. truck yep. on crawlers. And you know, everything we looked at, the thing that we didn't see until closer inspection was is that there's surface rust on the fuel tank on the top that you can't see unless you take an access port at. And then the other thing that we didn't see was on the radiator top tank. It actually has two outlets and one of the outlets is plugged and that outlet that's plugged is starting to show signs of corrosion. So he's going to take the radiator, I'll bring it to a um, radiator shop and have that other um, outlet inlet uh, removed in a flat piece of uh, sheet metal put over the top of it. Now, he also mentioned the Coopersburg pumper as Correct. needing two things. That's what I was just talking about, right. fuel tank and radiator. Okay, but yet we're doing much more than that. Yes, yes, yeah, the refurbishment is the, the, big, the biggest piece of the refurbishment I say is the reconfiguration of the equipment storage areas, the compartments. Okay, so and that, changing lights on the uh, anything that isn't LED currently an LED, we're going to change to an LED. So that's a modification we're doing, as opposed to something that the truck needed mechanically. Okay. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. We're just making it, we'll say, more contemporary. Okay. And then you know certainly the reconfiguration of the compartments is to to fit our equipment. You need to purchase new equipment to go on it too. Right. We're going to need some part of the refurbishment. Yeah. yeah. I mean, for the, we'll have enough hose, we'll have nozzles. Uh, I think we've got enough hand tools. The only thing um, that hurts us is when we applied for the Fire Act grant from, for the breathing apparatus, as I told you, 
we could only apply for enough breathing apparatus for writing positions for fire apparatus that we had at that time. So at that time, you're only able to purchase 23 sets. Because you need one for each seat. Right. That's, yeah, that's you know, if there's six people in the in a pumper or the ladder truck or the rescue truck, we try to have six, uh, six pieces of breathing apparatus plus six spare bottles. Jeff's still on the line, correct? Yeah. So looking at what Jeff said as far as the ladder, um, yeah, the ladder truck, that was somewhere in the vicinity of seventy five or eighty five. That's correct, seventy five thousand. So if you were to go in the direction that Jeff is saying, any idea, ballpark idea of what you're looking at? You'd have to ask him, but I think he would probably be talking in the in the ballpark of maybe three hundred to a half million. Is that what you're saying, Jeff? I would say uh, two fifty to three hundred at least is you want, you want to buy something good. These, these things are expensive to maintain. They got to be safe. Um, and before I bought anything, I would have it tested. But aerial service company, they, there's a couple different tests that they do. Um, there's an annual test and then a, a five-year test. And I would have them both done because you very easily can buy something. And, you know, we, we, we've seen some pretty expensive repairs and the that they discover and you want to find it before you buy it. I had read, a, I know I went up in the ladder on that one. <laughs> I had read an article, I'll never, I'm scarred by that by the way. Um, but I read an article that, about that, because it was a news article. If that ladder, I mean the ladder obviously works, but mm -hmm. if it doesn't, it's very costly to fix. But right, I'm right. guessing any ladder, truck ladder is expensive to fix. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. But is there anything particular about that one that, like, is so there issues? It's or? an in interesting discussion. So the only two manufacturers that have never had uh, ladder, mal ladder malfunction and um, catastrophic failure are LTI and Emergency One. So, you know, we have a great deal of faith. Uh, this ladder has been, um, this particular brand of ladder, LTI, has been an industry standard ladder for probably close to 30 years now. So I have a great deal of confidence in it, and especially that we, we know the history of the truck, um, that we know where it's repaired. We have confidence in that company. And um, it has a road test. It will have a current uh, ladder test certificate, um, the DOT ladder, um, what did I forget? And all the ground ladders also certified tested. So, you won't test it. Um, you won't test it. Thank you. Yeah. So, I, you know, I'm confident in everything that we've done and we've done the due diligence. And, and certainly, Jeff is, you know, more than welcome to go down to, to Terryville and take a look at it and ask any questions. Terry, when you were talking about this in one of the meetings, I recall you saying something like a number of years from now we would take the ladder or whatever and put right. on. I mean, wouldn't that kind of negate a little bit of the concern Jeff is talking about? Well, in a perfect world, I would, I would have a new cabin chassis put under the hydraulic ladder now, and that would probably cost somewhere between four hundred and six hundred thousand dollars to do that. So it'd be approximately half of what the price of a new aerial device would be. Actually, right about now, it's, it would be less than half of a new aerial device because I know full and well that Enfield just paid almost a million and a half. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. For and that was a quint. It wasn't a full aerial device. It's not. Right, as, right. It's not as big. Now yeah. with no equipment. Yeah. Or that was just yeah. the truck owners. <coughs> Correct. Well, what is the other expense for their new one? Okay. One point eight. One point eight. Yeah. To replace that one. <coughs> so I mean, this is a considerable saving. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To. And that was, when we initially talked about it, it, it was one of the things that I factored in before I was felt good about moving forward. We're getting this vehicle at such a price that even if, even if you dinged up a bumper, you could go to a steel shop and have them fabricate something, powder coat it, make it look good, and, and get it certified for the truck. And it's still not come anywhere near that $1.8 million. That, that's, what, that's the way I think. Now, a windshield or something along the line, that, that, I think that might be a little bit more technical. That might be something that would be 
Is that even replaceable? I mean, what happens? I think we would have to reach out to uh, somebody that has. Um, it would have to be a custom glass shop. Yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah. I believe that they can, they can, I don't know, make from scratch, but boy, they can certainly uh, right. manipulate yeah. something that, you know, I, I and just again, think, is, right. is, that, is that the safest option? Yeah, I um, just there's, think... Um, there's some, so there's some drawback to that too, but we still don't get anywhere near that 1.8 million right. price. I think there's enough of those trucks out there that somebody has them in a... Uh, in a salvage yard that we could probably get salvage pieces if necessary. It was a very, uh, Jeff, uh, refresh my memory, that uh, cabin chassis is a what? It's not a Grumman, it's a... It's a Simon Duplex. Right? Simon Duplex, yes, thank you. And that was a very, a very common uh, cabin chassis that was used not only for pumpers, and aerials for rescue trucks also. Yeah, there was one in Pennsylvania yeah, over there when we were down there. Was that it had been dismantled? That was old. That was a hundred and hundred. Yeah, six. That was a hundred footer. Okay, are we good with questions? All right. Thanks again, Jeff. Thanks, no problem. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, thank you. Okay, so moving on to our last item, or one of the last items on the agenda, is uh, the capital plan. So, this Actually, one. Can I back that up for just one second? Yeah, of course. Uh, Jeff, I, I, I really appreciate your uh, your statement of uh, or statement of certification after looking at the pumper and saying and telling us that we made a good decision. That's uh, it makes it makes you breathe just a little easier. So it's nice to hear from the expert that says it's it's a great piece. The, the rescue truck as well. Yep. Same thing. Awesome way. That's the way to buy them for sure. Okay. And that's that, to, to replace that rescue truck today is a million dollars. Correct. You'll get a lot of years of service out of that as well. It's a, that was a great, great truck. So, so, so far, so far, we're, we're batting a thousand. <laughs> yep. Thank you. Okay. No problem. Okay. So the capital plan I put together. I met with department heads. Um, put together, moved things around, and um, it it hasn't been reviewed by the board of, it has to be reviewed by you guys first, and then to the board of finance. So it's been sent to the board of finance, but contingent on your review. And then obviously it's not approved by the board of finance yet, so there might there'll more likely be some changes, but um, I did meet with department heads, got their needs, met again with them, and did my best to put them into the years which they the items would most be needed. And um, I didn't have an exact directive from Board of Finance of the totals for the years, but I followed the um, previous five-year planning, tried to stay within that model. So um, I don't know if you guys have had a chance to look at it, if you have any questions. Your legend here. Um yeah, I didn't put, um, okay, so that's one thing I want to explain because I already gave, only gave you one page. So my eyes are totally bad <laughs> at this time of day. I forgot my glasses, but the, um, it's okay. I, I think I'm going by color here. So okay. the, co the um, brownish orange color in public works, those items, um, I spoke to Ed Hubbard, our DPW director and he is hoping so one item is for the replace to replace fuel tanks we have which are um, beyond their life and need to be replaced they're functioning fine though and um, those are hi that's highlighted that's for 280,000 for two fuel tanks and th that's highlighted that color because it could possibly be paid for with grants and aids so, but we have to have it on the capital in case it, it's not. So hopefully we'll have um, grant money to pay for that. And the same with the $200,000 for the Morton, for the Morton building, which we're going to apply to use grants and aids for and that what, also. What is that? It's a um, salt shed. So it houses our salt for the roads. Instead of, it's a big building that's that the it's, one over. Is it there now? Yeah. Right, right across from what would be the garage door openings and Ed's office right. and that type of thing. Okay. 
and the fuel tanks are in the same area, correct? Correct. Okay. And then the um, the blue, oh, the blue, I have blue on here. Those were potential ARPAs, but I've removed those, and the blue is just the total. And the yellow um, was last year, and accessed already. And the green is just the trigger? The green is also last year, and that is... Um, Payroll counting services? Yeah, that doesn't necessarily need to be green anymore. I think we access, or we have that that 27,000 available, and then we requested another 32 for next year for a new um, software system uh, for um, accounting. So the bottom line number is the total. pretty much taken from previous years, and we you kept that about the same. Right. And what you did up above was to try to come up with the numbers that would total that bottom line. Yeah, so number. this bottom bottom line in the blue, you can ignore that. So the total general capital expenditure request line is the line we're looking at. Okay. And so I tried my okay. hardest to keep an average of 600, well, I. Ideally, under 600 for each line. So it averages out to under 600 each line. That makes sense. So some things might have to get moved around. So you can see 607 for the first, 643, and then 513, and then 555. Yeah. Even with my glasses. <laughs> Um, I feel pretty good because I can actually see it. I'm, I'm, I'm way ahead of the curve here. Wow. I have progressive contacts on and I still can't read it. <laughs> That's bad. So you didn't find yourself in a situation where because something needed to be purchased in a particular year, we were not able to hit the number that was there before. I, I'm used to seeing these where there's always a line underneath that shows the difference um, but you were able to put this together so that we were able to meet the years that people needed these for the most part. Yeah, I mean, there's some which I'm sure the time sensitive ones I had to move closer. Um, so, in some others, I had to push out, unfortunately. So, I have that year six column. Yeah. And the three columns from the last three years, those are really low, look a lot lower than mine. It's because I, I'm not, I'm kind of ignoring those right now, um, the totals, because I had re I had moved some to this year. Okay. So, and some some numbers shifted, so that number is not quite accurate. We can get an accurate one from Board of Finance, but because <coughs> some of those years look really low. Okay. That's why. Now, as far as roads go. Mm -hmm. So what are we doing? Here? Okay, so we have, um, this came up, I did talk to Ed about it. So we have um, a bond that we're paying, you right. know, and yeah. then we have about a million dollars left in roads in a road grant. But he explained, and it sounds like a lot of money, but they'll be paving Holcomb Street next year, and that's a $500,000 job. So in order to stay on top of this without having to get another bond is to put money each year in for roads. And if we use it, we use it. If we don't, we can move it. So I did put 200000 in a year starting next year, what, 24, 25, for road maintenance. Okay. When you mentioned earlier using the town aid um, grant, earlier conversations um, in previous or conversations in previous years were was pretty much using that money for roads. Mm -hmm. um, the two hundred thousand that you have in each year, uh, you're looking at that as um, a cushion 
primarily just coming from capital. Right. And you're targeting the town aid uh, grant money for the either the fuel tank. Oh, right. Or the and, well, and, ro it'll be, and roads. Mm. Yes. How much does that normally come in at per year? I believe. It's on, but um, I believe a million dollars. Okay. I can find out exactly. And then the the two hundred thousand dollars in, in your conversation with Ed seem to be sufficient to keep up, or are we going to find ourselves uh, in the same confident. situation? Oh, the two hundred in the roads. Um, well, we're going to have yeah, to bond he felt, again. He felt this would <coughs> hopefully prevent us from having to bond again. There, there were some conversations about um, a fund that would be used to prevent that from occurring again, but you're, you're allocating the 200000 so. Because that was, I forget what the total bond was for. That also includes roofs and right. as well. Roofs and roofs. It just would be nice to avoid that situation again. Mm -hmm. You can get to a point where you're not paying in, uh, interest on a, uh, a bond or a loan. That's advantageous. Any other comments? No, it, uh, looks the police department, the Ford F-150, mm -hmm. so they're looking at a truck this time? Yeah, there's... Um, Ford has done away with the Taurus. There are no police car sedans anymore. There is only the SUV available. Yeah. Um, the other option, the only other option at this particular zone is called the uh, F-150 Responder. It is a pursuit rated um, Ford F-150 police vehicle. Um, is it a truck? It is a truck. There was a concern raised the last time this was included in the capital uh, plan that the truck may cause some confusion um, if somebody isn't familiar with the police having a truck that they wouldn't be sure that it was a police vehicle yeah. i just want to make one disclaimer that it, it, uh, we already had in there ford one f ford f 115 i'm not sure the exact model that we were planning to so i just left that there but okay. it's a vehicle i would so, i would imagine if, if the police department is requesting that they have to be requesting the responder edition mm -hmm. um, and as far as um, as far as the confusion on the on the public, it'll be marked and lit up like any other patrol vehicle. They are because again the sedan is no longer available. A lot of the rural communities are either going with um, a, a Tahoe. Um, there are a few few communities that have the Durango version of it, um, and then Ford is I think right now the only one that's got a pursuit rated pickup truck. Um, the Crown Vic is gone, been gone for a few years now, so everybody knowing exactly what the police cars look like is a, pretty much a thing of the past. Um, even the Tauruses are, you know, they blend in so much with all of the other vehicles that until the lights are on, and police departments have gone to great lengths to streamline these vehicles, the light rocks are now literally two inches tall because the four inch bars that were up away are dragging fuel mileage down to next to nothing. Um, there are a myriad of reasons. Um, I, I know, again, from my experiences, that a lot of the vehicles are being uh, built without light racks, again, to keep the drag down. Um, it's one less thing for someone to vandalize when the car is parked. Um, you know, for another, again, there's a, a bunch of different reasons for it. Um, it, as soon as the siren goes and the lights light up and nobody really sees it, especially this time of year between 4.30 in the afternoon and 5 in the morning until it gets lit up. So I, I don't think, you know, there, there may be some confusion, but when the, the red and blue lights come, that uh, law says that that's a police vehicle. Okay. Um, and then the audible warning device as well. So that's, okay. I, I think it would be all right. And if we get something like that, I think it might it might warrant a social media splash that you know we've got a new vehicle and then like you say because if someone sees to your point if someone sees a pickup truck pull on their driveway at nine o'clock at night, right. 
Um, I'm hoping that they've, they've called the police and that's why they're there. Um, but you, it would be a different thing, of course. But they also all have cruise lights, which are utilized broadly. And I would imagine that uh, if they are not going in emergent fashion to a neighborhood in the evening, they'd utilize the cruise lights. Yeah, I, I recall the last conversation that there were pluses and minuses. It was more versatile. Absolutely. And uh, they could do more things with it. But it was just that I think the concern was raised actually in the Board of Finance meeting where there were some questions about it. But as long as we're prepared, fine. Okay. I can speak with some expertise to that. Yeah, I'm not going to argue. Awesome, Steve. <laughs> Good. I'm good. So I think we need a motion just to forward this to board. Yeah. And, and I will make a motion to forward the uh, Fiverr Capital Plan to the Board of Finance. Whatever. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Motion carries. Next on the agenda is public comment. Good. Okay. Next on the agenda is to adjourn. I'll make a motion. <laughs> I'm glad we make a motion to adjourn. Carrie says he wants to go. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 We are officially adjourned at 7.16 p.m.